Assalamu alaikum. My name is Atif Dost. Today is 13th February 2021. First Rajab 1442. The title is Cracking the Kaaba Code Symbols, As Safa, and Al Marwa. Uh, these were the questions raised during the introduction video. Only the fourth question has been added to the list. You can see the details at the link available below. As a refresher and for the completeness of the topic, I have added the meaning of the words again. Safa meaning to be clear or become clear or pure. It is also borrowed in Urdu language, Safa Kardo, meaning clear it up, which this fella failed to do and lost his status of being a planet. Marwa or Marwata. In the dictionary, Marwa has two meanings. Uh, first is pebble or flint, flint as in a cigarette lighter. The second one is Marwata, and in front of it, it says C Muru A. You see the red letter that is Hamza and pronounce A. And when I looked up the meaning of Muru A, it states the ideal of manhood comprising all knightly virtues, especially manliness, valor, chivalry, generosity, sense of honor. So instead of picking a favorite meaning myself, I found a researcher, his name is Professor Reuven Firestone, and he states, lexicographers define marwa as a bright glittering stone that may produce fire. And if you look up the um, formation of the earth, according to most models, these are the first three pictures listed. The first one is bright glittering stone. The second one is flint, as if um, somebody's creating a spark. That's what's shown in this picture. And the third one is pebble. It's an amber colored earth. If one would breathe on it, it seems like it would instantly catch fire or flame. Now in my first video, I said the first picture refers to the formation of the sun. Although the pictures are the same, but it was my mistake. So therefore, I would like to apologize. And here is my apology. All of the credit is due to Allah. Only the mistakes have been mine, Malcolm X. And I'm sure this is not the last mistake I've made. Chapter 2, Al-Baqarah 158. Inna wal marwata min sha'airillah. Indeed, the safa and the marwa, marwata are from the symbols of Allah, the God. So what is the meaning of the symbols of Allah? Before I explain the symbols of Allah, we need to understand what is a symbol. If you Google search what is a symbol, these are the two descriptions that come up. Number one, a mark or character used as a conventional representation of an object, function, or process. Example, the letter or letters standing for a chemical element or a character in musical notation. Meaning two, a thing that represents or stands for something else, especially a material object representing something abstract. Now, in this slide, there is an, um, as an example, question mark is a symbol. Now, if I tell you question mark is a hook and a dot under it, will it deliver its real meaning? Of course not. To understand a question mark symbol, you need to understand the sentence preceding it. The question mark symbol is preceded by an interrogative sentence, and that's the true meaning of it. Likewise, to understand the symbols Safa and Marwa, it is important to understand the correlation between the 
the waf loops and the roll of the valley between the two hills. Therefore, I will try to explain just that with concrete scientific knowledge. So let's start answering the questions. Why we count seven laps instead of three and a half loops? So this slide is pretty self-explanatory. From Mercury to Venus, lap one. Venus to Earth, lap two. Earth to Mars, lap three. So on and so forth. And it comes up to a total of seven laps. And that's the reason we count laps. Meaning number one of the symbols of Allah. Now here are the two systems, solar system and its counterpart system in the sanctified valley. So Mercury to Venus, Safa to Marwa, Venus to Earth, Marwa to Safa, so on and so forth. However, there is a noticeable difference between these two models. In the solar system, the planets are moving. However, Safa and Marwa are fixed or stationary. So let's find out what is the importance of stationary Safa and Marwa. Now here in the picture, gravity assist maneuver is shown and Jupiter is shown as a stationary planet. And an object or a spacecraft enters Jupiter's gravitational field Jupiter pulls it in, swings it around, throws it out. As it throws it out, it pulls it back because of the gravitational pull. Now, incoming and outgoing speeds are exactly the same. However, the direction has changed at an exact opposite angle due to a stationary planet. Now here is a simulator provided by, it's a courtesy of Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Labs. And they are showing a stationary planet. At the bottom, you'll see three graphs showing the speed of the three objects flying past the stationary planet. So here we go. So blue, yellow, and red objects are flying past it. As they approach, they make the contact they gain maximum speed and it starts dropping the speed down as Jupiter pulls them back. So that's the behavior of a stationary planet. Now notice the angle is exactly the opposite. This maneuver is also known as gravitational slingshot and that is why the two directions are exact opposite to each other between Safa and Marwa forming a u-shape and that's the reason we go in a u-shape exactly opposite direction meaning number two of the symbols of allah furthermore stationary planets also lay the foundation for understanding the advanced concepts of astronomy like uh, behavior of a moving planet is explained after introducing the concept of stationary planet. And that's another purpose of having stationary Safa and Marwa. Meaning number three of the symbols of Allah. Why perform the labs in the valley? So this is an example at NASA's website. It's the first example listed. From Jupiter's point of view, the situation is similar to a bicyclist speeding up, going downhill into a valley, then slowing down again on the uphill part of the road. So they are using a bicyclist, they're, so they are using a valley like this, V-shape, going downhill and uphill part it slows down. In our Safa and Marva gravity assist simulator on the right hand side, we have a pedestrian. He starts from the start point, swings around and goes downhill into a valley, gaining speed. And as he reaches or she reaches at the bottom flat surface of the valley, he or she starts walking. 
at a normal speed. It's natural. But when you're going down, because gravity is there, it's easier to go down, you gain speed. Furthermore, indeed, after negotiating the canyon, the cyclist's direction has changed. But in the end, he or she has not made a lasting change in speed. So here, the most important thing is cyclist has changed the direction, so is the pedestrian in our model. He starts from the starting point, swings around. That's why he starts from the swinging around, not goes over and starts going downhill. So swinging around, that's where it comes from. This is the meaning number four of the symbol of Allah. Why we sprint in the valley. So this picture showing Jupiter moving from right to left denoted by the red arrow. An object approaches Jupiter's gravitational field. Jupiter pulls it in, swings it around, throws it out. As it throws it out, the direction has changed because the planet is moving. The incoming and outgoing speeds are different. So is the direction. Now here is the simulator. I'll play it. This time, yellow dot represents the moving Jupiter and the object approaches. Look at the graph going up, reaches maximum. It tries to pull it back, drops down in speed, but a little bit, it, but it still it gains 7,000 clicks at an approximate, I think, um, per second. So so, so why we sprint in the valley? Here is the explanation by Independent about the space, how the space and the objects behave. The key point here is that by using slingshots around planets, they picked up speed with respect to the sun. That is move faster in their orbits around the sun. Why? Because the example above with the stationary planet is misleading. The planets are moving they are orbiting the sun. So while there may be no speed gain with respect to the planet, there is when we viewed from the sun. Always remember that the speed gain is respect to the sun, not in respect to the planet. So in our model, in the red rectangle, it still shows velocity in and velocity out is still remains the same. No change. However, in the center, if you look at it, it says looking from the sun or Kaaba, you have gained speed. That's why we run in the middle of the valley, away from both the hills. Meaning number five of the symbols of Allah. Now, furthermore, if you fly past the planet ahead of it in its orbit, you lose speed. So this means if you are going head on into the, against the movement of the planet, you will lose speed. If you are going clockwise around the planet, you would lose speed. If you fly past the planet behind it in its orbit, then you gain speed or if you go anti-clockwise or with the swing of the planet, then you would gain speed. So we, in our um, simulator, we are going counterclockwise. Therefore, we run or speed up. If we were going clockwise, we would be slowing down or going into slow motion in that area. That's the reason we are speeding up in the center of the valley. Chapter 65 at Talaq 12 Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatiyun wa min al-ardi mithlahunna yatanazzalu al-amru baynahunna lita'lamu anna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadir wa anna allaha qad ahata bi kulli shay'in ilma It is Allah who created seven skies and from the earth like them He reveals the command between them 
for you to know that Allah has power over everything. So the point here to discuss is Yatanazzalul Amru Bainahunna, the red words. Yatanazzalul Amru Bainahunna. He reveals the command between them. My question to you, has he revealed the command in detail and with precision between the planets? Of course he has by placing a functional gravity, functional gravity assist simulator between Safa and Marwa. Meaning number six of the symbols of Allah. Al-Baqarah 158 Inna safa wal min Indeed the Safa and the Marwa, Marwata are from the symbols of Allah, the God. So what does Safa and Marwa symbolize? What do they mean? They symbolize the planets, not the hills. That's why Allah never called them hills, just like a question mark symbol. No one calls it a hook and a dot. Safa and Marwa are also symbols. Now, as I understood the meaning of the symbols, the next three consecutive thoughts that came to my mind were addressed by the Quran in sequence. So my first thought was knowing the true meaning of the symbols, it's, it was natural for me to blame people that you are wrong because you don't know the true sense, essence of Safa and Marwa. Now Allah counters that thought at the thought level. I haven't said it to anyone. He counters it in, in the next two lines. فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ أَوْ يَعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاحَ لَيْهِ أَنْ يَطَّوَّفَ بِهِمَا so whoever on pilgrimage of the house or visiting, there is no blame on him. That he performs tawaf, circles, loops with them both. So Allah comes to the rescue. He stopped me right in my tracks before I could utter the words blaming anyone. Further, وَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ And whoever voluntarily, willingly does good, then indeed Allah is thankful, knowledgeable. So instead, He thanks them. Why? Because every time this ritual is performed, it preserves the system and carries on the knowledge of Allah to the next generation to get guidance. If those billions and trillions of people before us didn't perform the tawaf, I wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. And we continue to do the same for the generations to come. So pat on your back, job well done. Therefore, tawaf loops must be performed during pilgrimage or visiting the house. However, it must come from the heart willingly and not by coercion or force. Now coming back to the blame. So when, when Allah said this is, there is no blame on him, my next thought was, shh, I won't tell anyone. So two days went by and I came across these verses again. Over the years, I have read them many a time but this time it was different. Chapter 2, Al-Baqarah 159-162 in continuation. Inna al-lazina yaktumuna ma anzalna min al-bayyinati wal-huda min ba'di ma bayyannahu lin-nasi fil-kitab ulaika yal'anuhum allahu Indeed, those who conceal, shh, don't tell anyone. No need to tell anyone. Those who conceal, 
what we have sent down of explanations with irrefutable evident proofs and guidance after we have clearly explained to him why for the people in the book those are cursed by Allah and those who curse so he corner cornered me again no favors from Allah however there is an exit clause إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَبَيَّنُوا فَأُولَئِكَ تُوبُوا عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنَا التَّوَّابِ الرَّحِيمِ Except those who repent and make amends, make changes and clearly explain to them I turn for I am oft returning most merciful. So making a mistake is not an issue with Allah if one is willing to correct after realizing it with him it's not about who you know either it's about what you know and have you followed it the greatest quality of a muslim is he corrects and continuously improves himself until death now my final thought was they will reject it I know they will reject it because they are programmed. Inna alladheena kafaru wa matu wa hum kuffar ulaika alayhim la'natullahi wal malaikati wan nasi ajma'in Indeed those who reject and they die rejecting those upon them is the curse of Allah and of the angels and of all mankind. So it's the persistence of repeating the mistakes until death and expecting a different outcome. Then it can only be termed as a curse that is hindering your own progress. It's a curse because your brain fails to reach its full capacity. Imagine the concepts one learns at a gullible age of six, seven and eight and carries on without care verifying till the age of 60, 70 and 80. It's a sign of a stagnated mind, starved of stimulating content. Remember, only God's words in the Quran are constant. Rest is constantly changing, and so should you. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا لَا يُخَفَّفُوا عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابُ وَلَا هُمْ يُنْذَرُونَ Abiding therein, never is the punishment lightened for them, nor are they given respite. Why? Because your time is up. Once you die, your time is up. You won't get up and fix yourself then. Trust me, whatever you are, you would end up doing that when you get up again, when you're raised up. Time is now. Exit clauses are now available to you you can use them as much as you want like adam did he made a mistake he fixed himself he's back on back in the heaven these the references i've used and my next presentation is gravity as-safa and al-marwa thank you for listening assalamu alaikum